Hey everyone, it's Brenda Stoller, Mashable's tech reporter, and I am as excited as I can be during quarantine because I got a special delivery today. I have the iPhone SE. Commentators below are gonna be like, do Apple pay for this? And to that I say, no, I'm allowed to be excited for products that I have not used yet. So who knows, maybe my excitement will die down after I use it, but I'm gonna stop talking because I wanna unbox this thing. If you don't remember the iPhone SE from 2016, that was Apple's budget version of the iPhone. So this is the second gen version of that budget iPhone. It starts at $399, which in a world of $1,000 iPhones, and just flagship phones and you know even their other budget phones like the iphone 11 are pretty expensive so 399 for an iphone that packs a ton of cool features that i'll get into is cool even though we're stepping back from current technology like face id and triple quadruple freaking camera modules this is Still pretty impressive, I'll get into the specs. Um, so for what you're getting, Apple definitely didn't skimp out on the overall user experience and making sure that this is a phone you can really hang on to for longer than a year. Depending on who you are and what you're looking for, which I will also get into later because this is not for everyone. Okay, I took off the plastic wrap before, so I'm gonna unbox this baby, then we'll get into specs. Oh man, I'm actually really freaking excited. It's the red one. Okay, I've never done an unboxing. Got your little charging block. These are not AirPods, but they look like they are. We got a little charging cable. All right, I'm gonna take off the plastic wrap for all you people that wanna see that. Is this how we do it? I don't even know. How do people do this? Satisfying. Wow, oh my gosh, it's tiny. Oh my gosh, it feels so freaking weird. Ah. First impressions, it doesn't feel like I need to put a case on it. I don't feel like I'm gonna drop this and watch it shatter. It feels super durable. It also doesn't feel cheap though because a lot of the times, you know, budget phones are plasticky and you're like, I don't need to put a case on this because if it falls, it'll be fine. Like this is glass. Let's talk about some of the features. So on the back, you do have a single camera, which is really weird to look at. Having reviewed so many phones with tons of cameras packed onto the back. Um, so this is a 12 megapixel wide angle lens. That's all you're gonna get with this. Um, and then on the front is a seven megapixel lens. The cool thing about this is that even though you do have that single camera. Um, it does come with portrait mode. I have officially logged in. I have to say, like, even just like looking at my text messages on this display, it's tiny and it feels really weird. Um, it feels like somebody literally just gave me an iPhone 8 in my hands. I don't even know. It's just like everything just feels smaller it looks like a baby phone i mean it's not that crazy even ex like crazy different of an experience but there's definitely a difference and it definitely feels a lot smaller in my hands but oh my god <gasps> to have touch id back holy crap it's magical i really missed it i'm sorry like i the whole like look you just swipe down for your and then you swipe up <laughs> You don't have the whole right shoulder, left shoulder, like, it's simple. So even though it comes with Touch ID, um, you can still do things like Apple Pay and NFC tags, Express Transit, so you're not limited in terms of those features. It's really just the same thing, but with your little fingerprint instead of your face. Let's talk about the cameras. 12 megapixel wide angle sensor on the back, seven megapixel camera sensor on the front. Apple was still able to include portrait mode on both the back 
and the front. Let's try it out. I'm gonna take some selfies, even though my phone is bugging because I can't remember my email password. Okay, regular mode. Portrait mode. So obviously I'm still gonna have to test the camera out way more, um, but let's take a photo of, I'll show you guys what I'm working with here. Pretty nice. Overall, I think that this is really freaking cute. That is the word I'm going to use. It's cute. It's nice. It feels premium. If you were to hand this to me and I had no idea what an iPhone was, I would say, wow, this is a really nice freaking phone. And while it still has to be, you know, tested, in general, like this does not feel like a budget phone, even with Touch ID. I mean, again, it's not a physical button, so you're still kind of getting that up-to-date feel with it if that makes any sense and you're getting an up-to-date processor like this is literally the current processor that is powering these one thousand dollar plus iphones that is amazing i think that's great i think again it's longevity it means that even if you purchase this now you're not gonna regret it in a few years. So just to give you an idea of how fast this little baby is um it's 2.4 times faster than the A9 chip that was included in the original iPhone SE. This thing packs power, if I have not stressed that enough. I'd say that if anything, it is one of the main selling points of this phone because a lot of times when people are like, I don't want to spend a lot on an iPhone, which one should I get? I'm always so hesitant to tell them to get anything below the A13 chip because we've all experienced how much slower these phones get over time when Apple releases a feature heavy operating system and it kills the battery or it you know your apps start to freeze midway or you can't unlock your phone and it's just like there's just a ton of different problems that might arise when purchasing a phone with an older chip so a13 chip does make it run faster the other thing that it helps power is portrait mode so if you're wondering how the heck this thing has portrait mode um, given its measly <laughs> camera module, the A13 chip is what helps to power the camera system. The iPhone SE comes in red, which I'm very much a fan of, but it's also available in black and white. I prefer the red because it's given me heavy vibes from middle school or high school when I had the red <laughs> Motorola Razr. Um, it was also a product red. Um, and I think it's just a really nice change from the four screen iPhone that I have. I normally stick to these basic colors, but um, this is really fun and got the red case to match. Um, I'm already, I've been using this for like a little while between filming these scenes and I'm already sensing that I'm gonna have to keep the case on because it adds a little bit of like a extra buffer um and makes the display feel a little bit bigger on the front you have the 4.7 inch display on the side you have the little clicker for um your ringer and then you have the volume rockers and on the other side is your lock button and then on the bottom you have touch id so i literally it took me like a good five minutes to remember how to screenshot on this thing um so that's been a lot of fun um on the bottom you have the lightning port um, and the dual speakers. I don't know if you can see it while scrolling through, but you've got these pretty thick bezels um, on the front and bottom of the display, which when you're using a 4.7 inch display, it already makes it feel that much smaller. So we'll see um, whether it's something that annoys me over time. Another thing I really want to stress about the iPhone SE, the importance of that A13 Bionic chip. So again, that means longevity in the phone. It means that it will be included in years of updates to come. The same way that the iPhone 6S was kept on the list of compatible iPhones for every update that Apple came out with each year. So the SE does start at $399. That is for the 64 gigabyte model. 128 gigabytes is going to cost you 
$449 and then the 256 gigabytes is going to be an extra $100 at $549. So I'm going to be using the iPhone SE as my primary phone for the next few days. So be sure to check back on Mashable for my full review.